the the the, uh, the topic is uh, uh, this is the uh, India experience. Let's start. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Sir. Japanese Society for External Fixation for a very kind invitation, especially Professor Nobuyuki Takenaka and my teacher, Professor Sukasa Teramoto. Inter articular osteotomy, the tibial condyle valgus osteotomy, is perhaps the best import from Japan to India. So, and I would like to elaborate how. Japan India trade is boomed in the last few decades. As you can see by this honorable gentleman, Maruti Suzuki is the biggest car manufacturer in India and it heralded the change of Indian economy and brought the consumer culture and liberalization of the economy. These names are all household in India. I drive a Toyota car, I shoot with a Canon and Nikon, I see television on Sony, as do most Indians. And they are eagerly awaiting the import of this wonderful technology to India sometime very soon, next year, hopefully. All in exchange for perhaps the indirect export we made to Japan several centuries ago. Let's come to medial compartment osteoarthritis of the knee. With varying degrees of deformity, the question is, does one HTO do justice to all of them? With full length x-ray showing the mechanical axis deviating at different levels of intensity and magnitude, can one HTO solve all the problems? Obviously it cannot. So based on my small experience of performing high tibial osteotomy for more than 30 years, four different varieties, we tried to understand what's going on. For the first 15 years, I performed only the focal dome osteotomy fixed with the fantastic Elizabeth fixator which has a barrel shape, has very good bony contact and many advantages. Then we came across the medial opening wedge, which promised the accuracy of the equipment and the simplicity for the patient. Then came our understanding of the TCBO, which we were introduced to by Professor Teramoto on, uh, on the intra-articular osteotomy, which is, to put it very simply, is a manner of improving the Stability reducing the teeter in the joint. And finally, this new osteotomy that I designed, a series of osteotomies thereafter, coming to understand the, from, from the understanding of the needs of my patients, is a combination with a second osteotomy, then at a lower level. And since, according to my experience in the beginning, it was not enough to correct the mechanical axis just by the TCBO. So, this, this is how the brief, you know, the progression of the osteotomy looks like, the double one. So there's no literature to help us decide which osteotomy in which case. So the aim, we decided during coronavirus to study with my fellows, and we were ensconced in the hospital for two months with our patients. We studied over 10 years the four different osteotomies with more than 15,000 measurements in 161 knees. We did radiographic assessment, and we categorize the deformities into primarily, the first one is a primary deformity, which is a coronal plane virus measured by the mechanical axis deviation, the MPTA, the MLDFA, as well as hip knee ankle ankle. Then the second or secondary deformities we came across were the intra-articular, which are measured by two angles, the condylar plateau angle in its maximum form, which resembles the pagoda tibia and the joint line convergence angle, with which surgeons are more familiar. And then also the tertiary deformities that are present in osteoarthritis, which is, you know, the increased or decreased slope, the leg length discrepancy, which is the axial, and the rotational deformities. And we also took into consideration some ancillary measurements like knee and ankle joint line orientation. Based on clinical examination, tenderness, and examination of laxity on the, under anesthesia during gait and when recorded under the C-arm, we could record the laxity and based on these and also on the tertiary which is flexion deformity, torsion and rotation as well as leg length discrepancy. With a little help from the literature, 
we came across this algorithm, which I'll briefly share. So when the deformity is very small, virus with no intraarticular and no tertiary deformity, we perform an opening wedge hypergal osteotomy. When we have a large virus deformity without an intraarticular, but with an additional sagittal axial or rotational plane deformity, we choose to perform a focal dome osteotomy. Now, it gets interesting. When we have either a small or a large virus with an intraarticular deformity, but without a tertiary deformity, we choose to perform the TCD, which is a fantastic operation. And when we sometimes come across cases when the deformity is a large virus, there is an intraarticular deformity, as well as there is an axial, rotational, or a sagittal deformity, I choose to perform the TCDO with an extraarticular osteotomy. So this is the entire algorithm. So I believe the best Japanese import to India is the TCDO. And Professor Teramoto came to Assam International in 2014 in India, which I had the privilege to chair, and we learned from him. And it was a wonderful opportunity to understand this, and he kindly wrote this up in the first issue of the JLR in 2015. We came to realize that what the mind doesn't know, the eye cannot see. So how to diagnose an intraarticular deformity? Clinically, if it's a large virus, you can suspect it, dynamic virus in gait, and a mediolateral laxity. Radiologically, with an increased MAD, JLC and CPA. So we used and did the TCDO slowly with a little help from Professor Teramoto over email, and then finally with a visit in 2019. So <laughs> what we now know is that it changes the upper tibial shape. And what, so we tried to understand this and quantitate this. And we wrote up a paper, there are new measurements we came across for evaluating the change in the upper tibial shape. The first we call the spine edge angle, which goes from the tibial spine to the edges of the condyles. And the second one is the spine vertical distance. This actually tells us that this increased distance is tensioning the cruciate ligaments. And so we found this way of actually categorizing the change from the pre-op to the post-op status. And it doesn't change in extraarticular osteotomies, but dramatically and statistically significantly changes in the TCBO. So let's take a look at this lady. She has very bad arthritis in both the knees, and she's walking very badly. She can barely walk. On the right side, she has a large virus, flexion deformity, which is in the tertiary plane. And, uh, but she had no mediolateral laxity. There was no intraarticular deformity. There was no mediolateral laxity under anesthesia. So we did a focal dome osteotomy, fixate assisted. You see the fibular osteotomy there. It's a dome-shaped osteotomy. We've corrected the slope for the FFD. We've done the patellofemoral release and a dome osteotomy to give her a very good result. But on the left side, she has mediolateral laxity. So this is how we did the TCDO. And I must admit that I look forward to Professor Teramoto's comments at the end of this talk. So here she is at the end of both the surgeries, uh, really completely free from pain and walking very badly. So judicious use of all osteotomies. Now let's take a look at what happened to TCDOs. These are some of the earlier cases. This elderly lady had an excellent result with the TCDO, but the mechanical axis came only to 45%. So I was worried. And what we came across when we measured that all our TCDOs corrected the mechanical axis modestly well. It adequately corrected the CPA and the JLCA and did not overcorrect the MPTA, which is crucial for preventing excess tension in the anterior cruciate ligament or for creating patellofemoral or leading to patellofemoral arthritis. So TCDO is great for moderate virus deformities, which is the primary deformity, is great for the intraarticular but it doesn't correct the tertiary. And we found that the post-operative mechanical axis deviation on an average, I mean, to the maximum reached only 45%. So the theorem of TCDO is congruent contact and stability are most important. But the question we asked is what happens in the long term if the mechanical axis is not corrected? Since you can't teach an old dog like new new tricks, and we've learned that alignment is the most important. So we tried to figure out do we need to do more. Then to add a second osteotomy. Here the alpha 60 degrees is 21, 
the Varus JLCA is 11, the Valves JLCA is 2 degrees. And the formula given by much later, which we came to know by Kuashima and JEO, is if alpha 60 is greater than the Varus minus Valves JLCA multiplied by 1.5, we need a second osteotomy. So the second osteotomy can be of many types, closing wedge, opening wedge, or a distal dome. So let's see the closing wedge in the same lady on the opposite side, in the same plate, to perform the second closing wedge. Barely got the mechanical axis to neutral, because I think we need a longer plate, so I'm not very happy with this. But, as you can see over here, she is seven years down the line after both the surgeries, Though the virus is still present, she has zero pain, no pain whatsoever. So we tried opening wedge osteotomy, which is, um, you know, the opening wedge just beneath the TCO. I think it's technically difficult, I did try, I'm not very happy with it. So then what do I really like is something we decided to do. Take a look at this lady, the very large deformity. You can see the stress fracture leading to a large virus with the pagoda tibia. And she had this, the hills are of the TCBO is fixed with half pins and a screw and a distal osteotomy which I will demonstrate in a video very soon. And here she is with a full correction of the mechanical axis way beyond 55% with a straight limb and zero pain. So if there is some time I would like to just briefly show this the technique that we have you know, created for addition of the second osteotomy. You can see it's a really horrid deformity, it's in the tibia and in the knee joint, it's not in the femur, the pain is terrible, uh, this is a classic lateral thrust or a dynamic virus deformity and really the worry is that it's impossible to correct only with the TCBO. So that's the significant laxity recorded on the CR. <coughs> we start with the fibular osteotomy because we need to translate the distal fragment laterally. We fix the distal block with two rings initially, and you know, the steps are outlined. These are simple, very routine in this hour of stuff. Nothing new there. Then start with the medial soft tissue release. Not release the superficial MCL too much. Do the patellofemoral release for the patellofemoral pain, and through both the medial and lateral windows, resect the osteophytes. Because you can use them as a graft, and then we find that the laxity increases. So then we start with the placement of the guide wire. Here we want to try and go near the lateral tibial spine, but medial to the patella ligament. And then, you know, to, you know, the standard steps of the TCBO, most of you are very familiar. I apologize for, uh, for being repetitious, if at all. Uh, sometimes, so that's, that's, the, that's the hairy part. That's the part that most surgeons can't digest. They always wonder what's happening to the ACL and they, they, they're, they're so worried, but it's not at all difficult when you see Professor Terremoto do it. And here's the medial part of the cut. So sometimes we choose to use a curved cut rather than a straight cut. And uh, you know, sometimes the osteotomy doesn't separate, so you go down and you ensure that it's completely released with an osteotom or with a blunt scale. And then we put the hinge protection wires as I was you know, told use the spreader and then the maximum spread with the help of the curved osteotomy there is still some bony contact which I think is a, is, is, is a bit of an improvement and then we find that the both condyle is in simultaneous contact with better stability then we fix the upper osteotomy acutely with two half pins the medial and the lateral we add a CC screw then we use these osteophytes as grafts, right? It's really not important because the osteotomy heals up wonderfully even without grafts. And then we add two vertical pins, thin ones, just distal to the osteotomy, outline the holes, release the tourniquet, apply the ring, the upper ring gets fixed with all the four half pins and imparts enough stability. The dome osteotomy is translated, which is why fibular osteotomy is a must, which is not required in the TCBO, and then we fine tune it, there's the patient walking for the second day and uh, you know, correction to 57%, which is more than adequate. And here is his gait, his lateral thrust is eliminated. So just a couple of more examples. The question that I'm leading to in a large bow-like deformity like this, I, I think I went overboard 
and also connected the femoral bone with the double level fixator assisted nailing and a TCBO at the upper tibia on the right side, followed by a similar procedure on the left, which I had to correct with a double osteotomy on the left side, giving her an excellent mechanical axis as well as function. The DLFN was reported by us in the BJJ. So we come to the results of our combined osteotomy. We corrected the JLCL very well to less than four degrees, the condyle of lateral angle from 10 to less than two, and the mechanical axis gratifyingly went up to way beyond 59%. So the combined osteotomy does justice to the primary, secondary, and tertiary deformities. What is not yet clear, I shall end my talk with questions. What is not yet clear is what is the end point of TC? I still struggle with this. Or as the Russian surgeons from Kurgan would say, this is how they would say, with which way the wind is blowing. There's a creep phenomenon. So is there going to be more opening of the joint? If I open it more, will it overstuff the joint and change and damage the kinesiology? What is the role of a CT scan? Can we do shape modeling of the condyles to find the better or the best fit? How much to release the superficial MCL? Does osteophyte harvest relax the deep MCL without damaging it? And hence, does it reduce the need for excessive superficial MCL release, which is important for better correction with only TCO? And the most important of all, is mechanical axis really that important? And under correcting it, will it really hamper long term results with only a TCO? And unfortunately for me, the question I ask is my second osteotomy redundant? So I think the trade that should flourish the most between Japan and India is the TCVO. Bhumo Arigato. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's open the questions and comments. Dr. Teramo. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I think they're good result, and a lot of the Japanese are also excited. And uh, please attention to uh, um, more serious. Sometimes the fractures are not very immense. Please attention. And uh, if the lateral immense is structure and uh, stability is not is not really improved, not improved. Please attention. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions?